Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff Superlight 529 RLBS fifth wheel. You guys picked a cool unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, not only are you going to have a slide back here, but you can have an awning that's going to go out even further than that. So get an eye about how long you're going to need for that to open up. And then on your off campsite, Besides your slides, I also want you to think about where your power and wire connections are going to be. Your power is going to be all the way in the rear corner, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle, and then your docking stations up toward the front on the driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we're going to do is level our unit. So inside your front storage door here, there's going to be instructions on this, but they're actually pretty easy. Open this up. First thing you're going to do is you're going to turn it on over here. Now, your jacks in the front, you can just lift them up to get your unit up off here. And all you're going to do simply is touch auto level. And ground in front. So what it's going to do, make sure your vehicle and everything's out of the way. What it's going to do is it's going to start running down your stabilizing jacks in the rear and jacking up and down the front until this unit is level and stable. So you see it doing all the adjusting. So Starting to bring the front back down. Now bring down the rear and I'll show you what that looks like when that is done doing it. You can see how they come down, down back here. Now all this auto leveling will run off your battery. You see it will continue to tell you, please wait. Well, it's uh, auto leveling. Now it's extending the front. Normally you'd get completely out of the way. Have no one up inside it, just letting it do its thing. Extending the rear is just back, going back and forth till it has itself level. Once it does, Auto level success. All right, once your unit's level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. It's got the big long 50 amp cord plugs in here in the rear. The way these go on now is just picture a clock, say it goes in at 10 o'clock, turn it to the right, and then put your washer on. Now, should you be at a campsite where you need to plug into a 30 and your convenience pack is a 50 to 30 amp reducer. If you ever need to plug into a 110, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer in there as well. Get the power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. All right, so I'm going to take this quick connect hose off here real quick so we can see things a little better. I want you to see how that hooked up. All right, so here's our docking station. We have a light up here. All right, so I can't say we're going to hook up the way it says city water. We have four knobs to turn. White down, green to the left, red up, blue to the left. When these match city water, you're gonna grab your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Hook this up where it says city water. That's set, your hose is hooked up, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Yours is over here on the campsite. And all we're doing at this point, folks, getting our drain plug in there. Get some plumber's tape around that, not putty. Get that in there nice and snug. I believe that's an inch and an eighth. Get that in there tight, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, after that hose has been on for a few minutes, we can go inside and open up our slides. 
The reason I want you to do that is I want you to get in there and anywhere you have water coming in, sinks, showers, turn them on, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, shut them off, and you're all set. Pretty much that simple. Now let's say we're going to go dry camping. We're going to take this out somewhere. We're not plugged into some water. You got a two-step process to go through. We're going to start by filling our tanks. Power tank fill. There's a city inlet to your tank. So fill your tanks by turning these every way, but just turn our blue down now. All right, so once these match the tank fill, we will go to the other side and fill your fresh water tank. And that is over here on your campsite. We're just above your tires. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Keep an eye on that. Once that's full, remove that hose. Put this cap back on. And then whenever you want to utilize that water, you turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked to city water. That's already pressurized. All right, set back over. All right, we're all set with power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. Again, we got this hot and cold shower with this quick connect hose here. Cable or satellite connections, water pump for your fresh water. So city water, power tank fill and dry camping. That's how you set it for winterizing. Make sure you bypass your hot water heater inside first. That'll be in your owner's manual. And same thing, sanitizing. All that does is siphon uh, soapy water into your tanks to clean them out. Connections here, black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. This is where you can run your water hoses down and be able to close your outdoor here. We've got a griddle, a stand and holder that. I'll show you where that goes on the other side. Water filter and handle. You change that water filter out right here. Your winter, unit is winterized. When you unwinterize, if you want to use that water filter, that's where you put that in at. Close that up. Continue out here. We've got another docking light. Flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of that. It does get hot. Uh, they also sell bug guards in the store. Keep, keep uh, any bugs from nesting in there. So here's where we dump our black and gray tanks and gray tank number two. That's access to your ice maker valve, a uh, vent for your exhaust indoors. There is your override for your slide through here. Manual override. Again, our power, you got a ladder. Utilize it. Go up there two, three times a year. Check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Maintaining the roof of this is really going to maintain the lifetime of this trailer. Um, you're uh, prepped for a backup camera. Another device you can purchase. Hot, that spray port hose will come over here and hook up. Got done washing here. Kind of soapy. Uh, a couple of outdoor speakers on your cap side. Here's where that griddle will set and table. Um, this is where TV can go in, uh, 110 and cable here. Again, our fresh water, and then over here is our fresh water drain. Right there, that big white handle. Quick connect LP for that griddle over here. Uh, hand crank down for your spare tire. Storage, again your hot water heater. On your hot water heater, if it doesn't seem to be working, look to see if either one of these are bubbled up. If they are, press them back in. They're a, a, a reset. This your pressure release valve. A couple of override hand cranks, one for your spare tire, one for your slide. Propane here. Batteries. Up in here, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. This is your battery disconnect. That'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit. We'll talk about that when we talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector. There's your hydraulics for your slides. More docking lights for up front. 
Um, these are just vents for your batteries to be able to get air and you're prepped for solar. You can plug in a solar panel right there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. But covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. All right, coming up inside the unit. First thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of emergency. Also, straight up over to my left is a control panel. This heads straight over there. And let's talk about it. Let's start here. This is where you can check the levels of some things, starting with your battery. Fresh water, that's the one I said you can tell when your potable water is full. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your hot water heater or hook to electric. Your hot water heater or hook to gas, it does make a difference. Choose correctly. Here's where you can turn on your Wi-Fi. I'll send you a video from um, Forest River on how to hook this Wi-Fi up. It's a really cool Wi-Fi extender. A water pump, that's where you get to your fresh, turn on your fresh water. Tank heater, that's just a little 12-volt pad that's on your tanks. If you think you're going to be in inclement weather and they might freeze, you can turn that on there. Slide controls, we brand them out, we'll utilize them closing it up. Awning extend, on your awning. You only want to run your awning out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees you can see the bar. You see it already, if you go too far, starts to run itself up onto itself and run itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out, make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Uh, also on these awnings, they do have a pitch control on the end. You can bend that arm to run the rainwater off one end. But awnings are made primarily for shade. Uh, they're shade awnings, light rain, but any type of heavy rain or heavy winds, bring it in, save yourself the trouble. We don't want to get these broke. All right, close that up. As I do, I'll tell you these slam locks work best when gently slapped gently slammed all right uh continuing here we got a lot of interior lights our awning lights step lights etc down here tire pressure monitoring system that's located here in your unit somewhere i will send you a video from tpms up here uh is where you can go ahead and put all this on your phone put this app on your phone one control app and you can stand outside and open up your slides and awnings etc this is your fan down there on the end. Uh, slide control up here. I left this one last for us. This is our bedroom slide. Put out on that. You see that run out. As that runs out, this is where you pre-wire for solar control. Um, this is a template for the text to use if you ever do decide to get this wire for solar so leave that on there that means it's all the way out max air vent turn that on here what that does it turns it on and opens it up you can close it change speeds set it to a certain temperature these are really nice hit off and it literally closes itself and shuts off covers everything on that wall let's come in here to our thermostat all right i am going to go straight to ac crank up the ac in here what do we got here cool there we go cool Put on i think the temperature set low enough i should crank our ac up There it goes. Now there's a quick dump. If you can get up and reach these, that would blast the cold air down through in here. Now you'll notice when I shut the AC off, I'm going to go straight to off. System off. Generally the AC shut off quickly. There we go. But now I'm going to go into heat. The zones one and two. You can change the zones two. Oh, let's turn the heat up. 
turn the thermostat on or the furnace. There it goes. Just took a little longer to kick on than I'm used to. But now generally most units when you shut off the heat, it does take a few minutes longer for the fan to cycle through on there to shut off. Here's your thermostat. Light in here. Let's talk plumbing. There's your access to it. Keep maintain it, especially if you travel a lot in this, you're bouncing a house up and down the road. Keep an eye on things, make sure nothing has uh Wiggle loose over time. You got a self-explanatory. There's a manual for this though, because it is a it's just regular microwave. Down below that, light and fan. Glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn that to high, hit your spark, and these will light up. Um, same thing on your oven. Hit that to the light, open this up, hit your spark here. That'll generally light that up, and you can see the reflection down here on the bottom plate. Um, if not, go ahead and turn that panel light down, and becomes an oven light. Get up in there and make sure your pilot lit. Once your pilot's lit, turn it to your desired temperature. Smoke alarm up above the fridge area. Big residential fridge here. We've yet to clean that out, but all your controls up top here. Make sure this is shut off when you're going down the road. Big pantry. The door to make sure you have secure. Got one touch lighting. I'm going to show you quickly how to turn your sofas into a bed. Start by removing your Velcro back. Your Velcro straps are holding that on. Get in the middle. Lift up. Pull your legs out and pull it towards you. Put your back cushions down. And just that quickly, you've got a sleeping quarters. This will do the same. There's actually room left when they're both folded out. Putting these back, make sure you always lift the back up first. Get that sticker on there. That's the model number of your sofa here. And then we're putting it back. Make sure you kind of stand in the middle so you have good leverage. Pulling your legs in, watch your fingers as you bring it down. Your cushions back on there. Just that quickly, you're back to a sofa. Emergency escape window here. These recliners, this is a lumbar support. Bring that forward and back. And this is what I call a parachute pull recliner. We'll lay right down. No, it's nice. Hold that up with your own feet. Uh, again, just lighting on these are all one touch. Got our TV. Remotes are where they should be. Only thing I want to tell you on your TV is when you arrive at the campsites, uh, run a digital channel scan so you can pick up all the local channels at the campsite you're at. Um, below that, sound system. Don't know what I'll pick up inside this building here, but let's give it a couple scans. AM, FM, three zones, indoors, outdoors, or none of them. Really nice sound system. TV staying on me. There we go. Down below that, your fireplace. Not just for looks. I can turn that on, show you all the pretty colors, but the biggest thing I can feel it already is the heat. That's brightness. Down here's your thermostat. Crank this heat up. I feel it already. If it's chilly here in the morning or evenings and you're at a campsite and you're plugged in, don't waste your gas for heat. Crank this up. It'll get it toasty in here in no time. 
Do you have a hand crank open vent up here? A beautiful dinette set. 110 with GFCI reset here in the hallway. Coming up to our bathroom. Crank the lights up on here. First, when you arrive at the campsite, you get some water in this thing. Give this a couple flushes. Put a couple gallons in your black tank. Your black tank will thank you later. Another Max Air Vent uh, remote control for this one. Main thing I just want to tell you on your showers, make sure that this door is snapped open for travel. We don't need these glass doors bouncing around down the road and breaking. More plumbing to maintain. One access panel, that's a square head screw. Which brings us back into our bedroom. Turn our lights on. I'll tell you that that is a little temperature reader. It helps the thermostat to work better in the unit. Beautiful pantry in here. A door to show you to have snapped open for travel. There's our lighting for our closet here. Again, make sure that's snapped. Back here is our breaker box and fuses. Looks like you got a handful of 15s, a 5, a 40, a 30. Got quite a variety there. Get a bunch of 15s and then a variety pack. Have them with you when you go camping for sure. And that about covers everything. I think we are checking here. No, I thought you might be prepped for washer dryer. No, that about covers everything. I can find your carbon monoxide propane detector. Tell you lastly about that. And there it is. So this is 12 volt. This is your carbon monoxide propane detector. It is always running off your battery. I wanted to tell you that. So if you are dry camping or just sitting in the yard somewhere, use your battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down. There are straps to hold your strap your chairs to uh, our pantry middle here. It about covers everything in here. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. So I want to start by shutting off my interior lights. Reason why, now I know any lighting that's on is lights I've turned on as accent lighting. So I'll just walk through the unit. Uh, I'll tell you one more thing on your radio. If you touch that off, it's mute. But if you hold it, it shuts it off. Shut off our fireplace. Shut off my last light here. Head up into my bedroom, do the same thing. Shut off my lights. Bathroom lights are off. Now they are. All right, so now that all of our accent lighting is off, we can turn on our interior lights here and say doors and drawers. Walk through your unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slides from coming in. These are very important. We don't need that slide ripping that door off. These snap closed really well. They're hard to bounce open on their own, so just make sure they're closed. Pantries. Everything closed everywhere that needs to be closed. Batten down the hatches. Go through the unit. Um, make sure all of our vents are closed. Anything that should bounce around won't bounce around. Everything's secure. We'll start back here and bring this bedroom one back in. Just hit in. Again, make sure our pantries, or excuse me, our closet back there is locked to open or close. Our doors back there are secure. want you to hear that noise that is the slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way go ahead and take your finger off the button the noise.
And it's okay to hear it do it once or twice. Uh, your TV, if you're pulling that strap on the bottom, that will swivel. But make sure you push it back against the wall before you uh, bring these slides in. Otherwise, crash would happen about that point right there. And lastly, slide number one. Your investment in slide toppers is great. You gotta keep a lot of debris off your slides. However, check them out every now and then. Come in here um, with them closed, hop up on these benches, grab a ladder maybe, and just look up there and see how they're doing. All right, that put, does everything in here. Shut off my interior lights. And exit the unit. I'll make sure all my exterior lights are off. My porch and my awning. Oops. Awning. Now the biggest thing on these steps is you want to make sure this door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will uh, catch coming in. Your feet are also adjustable. Push up on this metal rod here and that'll move your feet. So we'll bring our steps up. If we are out dry camping, excuse me, we're gonna come back over here. For our dry camp, we're gonna get up underneath this fresh water, dump that fresh water drain. Bring up our stabilizing jacks. Our auto leveling system. All right, so to bring these up, turn this on. We're gonna hit left and right together. What that's gonna do is that's gonna bring up our rear. The rear jacks are retracting. Takes a few minutes, you can be able to see it from here. All right, now once we're up, all we gotta do is bring our unit up or down in the front here. Or hit down. Get our unit back on, head on home. Or the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we are at a campsite, we'll unhook our power, our water, our cable. Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. Not the dump station park accordingly. Your dump's gonna be right in front of your tires on your off-camp side. Got a 10-foot hose comes your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull that black handle. Once that black handle sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. If the show's empty, come back out here. Leaving that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station and hook up to it this tank flush. Hook that up, again emphasizing with the black handle open. Turn that hose on, let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close that up. Make sure all that black washout water you put in there has drained. Then close your black tank and pull your gray. When that gray is done, close that one and pull this gray. Now usually while my grays are draining, I will get up underneath here and dump my low point drains. I'm done camping for the season. I don't like to leave stagnant water in my hot water heater. Come back over here. Lift up on this pressure release valve. Now be careful, some hot water is gonna come out of there. When it's done, push that back down. Pull your drain plug. And that's all set. When that last gray is done, close that gray up, grab your sewage hose, and conveniently, and more importantly, sanitarily, store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for your purchase.
Hope you enjoy this Flagstaff for many years to come. Happy camping.